All right, guys, welcome to the first episode of a very long tutorial series, basically for new players and old players alike. Basically jumping into all the little nitty gritty tips and tricks about Rocket League and where to start. So for the first episode of this uh, this video series, we're just going to be jumping into the settings and where to start with the game. So when you jump into this game for the first time, there's a lot of settings that aren't really optimal, I would say, and there are preferences and different choices you can make. But the starting settings are not very good. So we're going to be jumping into this first episode of the series and just talking about what you can change to start off the game and uh, what to look for for improving slowly in this game. So let's get right into this series. Hope you guys enjoy. If you are new to my channel, I do daily videos and do custom apps and stuff. That's a whole other thing. But I do also do competitive series uh, on my channel as well. I used to be a pro in the game and play in the RLCS, which is the Rocket League Championship Series. And I was in that for five seasons. So I ended up leaving for content and just trying to help people and and uh, you know include new content for Rocket League. And uh, I'm now going to be trying to give back to the new players who are on the Epic Games client and uh, basically give a rundown of how to play the game, how to run through your settings, how to move up in the ranks. So let's get right into it. Hope you guys enjoy. Before we even jump into a casual game, I want to talk about a few things you should be doing before you even touch the game. Uh, number one is, if, since you're on PC for Epic Games Client, um, if you're on the new free-to-play client on the PC, uh, a few things you can note is uh, your settings here in the video settings. I believe they're set to not completely on or off here, um, but I would say that if you're trying to be competitive and like improve, uh, dropping these to all performance de definitely does help, if you, especially if you have like a lower end computer. But even me with my computer, I make sure to turn all these off and I leave transparent goalposts on. So what transparent goalposts is basically when you're in the net here, you can actually see through this. I'll show you the difference if you turn it off, but you definitely want to have it on because it helps with information. As you can see, it gets a little bit more cluttered. Uh, this map isn't too bad, but if we move into a map, let's go uh, to another training map here. I think Farmstead is one of the worst for it. The inside of the, the goalposts is actually just solid. So you lose all of that information. You cannot see anything. So one thing I would suggest is just quickly turning the making sure that's on and leaving the rest of the settings off if you want to have the best result. Uh, FPS, even if you have a 60 FPS monitor, I would suggest you raise this a bit if, you're, if your graphics card can handle it. Um, this game actually calculates your movements depending on the, the number of FPS. So if you set it to 30, you can only uh, calculate your inputs every 30 ticks. Even though if your 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 monitor can only display 60, it's good to have it so that it shows or uh, calculates more often, uh, in a, and sort of recycles those those frames if you can. Um, but that's that's pretty much the video settings. I would keep uh, render quality as high quality. Otherwise, you get like really grainy. As you can see, it looks really grainy here. Um, I would leave that as high. Um, unfortunately, because I did do that, it's gonna set everything back to like. Actually, no, it didn't. Okay, they fixed that. Um, the render details where the custom comes into all of this stuff. Um, make sure VSync is off. Uh, it makes a huge input delay. So make sure that's off. That's pretty much it for the video settings. I think that's like uh, the best settings you can possibly have. I use 245 just because that's what I'm used to. Um, there was an issue back in the day when it was 250 uh, would cause stuttering. Audio is, you know, whatever. Uh, you can turn off the game when it's unfocused, like the audio uh, when the game's tabbed out, um, which I keep that off for the most part. Uh, it is helpful if you're streaming or something and you want to hear the game, like if you're waiting for a queue or something. Uh, there's obviously, obviously quick chats. You can use your D-pad on your, your controllers to do all these quick chats. I would do, do a quick look through these and just see what they're all about. They sometimes help with your teammates or, you know, you can, you can compliment them in the compliment section. A uh, bunch of different stuff. It doesn't really help with the gameplay, but it is there <laughs> if you want to check it out. Um, the next thing... I like to crank in the interface, I like to crank the nameplate scale up to 200%. Uh, this is sort of personal preference, but at the same time, um, when you are looking for a player behind the ball, uh, their nameplates will be gigantic. I'll quickly show that in a bot match here so you can see how, how the difference is. So as we jump into a, a match here, you can see with 200%, you can see Yuri's name tag here. And what I will do is, since this is a uh, exhibition match, what I can do is I can pause it. And if we go back to 100%, um, you can see you actually lose quite that quite a bit of information um obviously with yuri he's gonna be a very slow body so just drive nice and slow to the ball here um 
but I, I still think 200% is definitely the way to go. At least 150%, I would say, but 200% is really good. Um, same plate mode is something else, which uh, if you use nearby only, it becomes a diamond once they're pretty far away. Let's see if I can drive for the, for far enough away here. Um, right there, it becomes a diamond. I don't really like that because it's harder to see their names when they blend in with the background. So what I do is I keep that as default, which means it's on all the time. Uh, another few things, if you want to see the connection indicators, that's this button here. Uh, if the servers are being wacky, uh, it's not really going to affect gameplay, but if you want to know if something's going on, it's definitely helpful. Um, forcing default team colors is good. If you have a club and you have a weird color and you don't want to see other people's colors, uh, definitely turn that on to force that. Notifications during gameplay can be helpful. If someone invites you during a game and it covers your boost meter, uh, you can disable that by turning this off. Now by default, they have team colored boost meters. Uh, that changes the color at the bottom uh, the bottom right here. You can see my, my team boost is blue. I don't really like that either. So I turn that off. It just keeps it consistent. And there you go. You see, it's like, you see it's like a yellow orange color, um, which is a lot nicer. I like the red color from the original. Just makes me, I'm used to that with my perspective. Like when I'm using uh, my peripherals to see my boost, you can see as it goes below 75, uh, it tra changes from red. So it's nice to know uh, I think it's 80 actually. It might be 80. Yeah, it's 80. Um, it's nice to know when you're, you're near full boost just from your peripherals. It's a lot easier to see when you don't have the team color on. Another thing uh, to know is the ball cam indicator. You can see in the bottom left, there's a ball cam indicator. Uh, that tells you when you have ball cam on. That means you focus on the ball here. Um, or I think by default, it is Y or triangle. And you can turn it off and this makes your car face in the direction that you're facing. Um, so one thing to note about ball cam uh, is when you're looking like this, it's hard to think, but basically when you see your car here, I kind of imagine my controller facing the other way. So like this is the handles of the controller and sort of imagine your controller sitting in the front of your, your car. So if you're sitting like this, you know, you've got your car, uh, your controller is facing forward. And then kind of like as you're turning, your controller is turning to a different direction. So if I'm facing this way, this is what confuses people. When I'm facing this way, holding left on my analog stick is going to turn my car this way. Because you, you think about the front of the car, it's going to turn with the, the wheels. So you got to imagine that your perspective is changing as you're facing this way. So if I want to turn right, I go this way. If I want to turn left, this way. Just constantly think about the front of the car. Um, I know that a lot of people, when they start off this game, they sit in this camera. But you lose a lot of information. So you can see if I turn my car, I, I get a lot more, more info on the sides. So it's important to know to switch before, uh, between this back and forth. Uh, you, you get kind of used to it as you play. But as you just like change between perspectives, you can do different stuff like this, where you just change camera back and forth. Uh, the pro level players, like like me and other pros, um, we will constantly switch between the two as we're trying to get more information on the field. That's more of an advanced thing, obviously, but um, as you play, you'll get used to switching it. I would just get used to toggling on and off and get comfortable with when it when it's useful and when it's not. So right here, you can turn and get the boost pad, turn it off, grab it. It just becomes more of a habit as you play more and more. So going back to the ball cam indicator, if you if you want to know what, what you're in, it's usually pretty obvious. I don't usually keep it on because it's distracting the bottom, um, but it is nice if you want to know which camera you're in. But you can turn that off and you can see it's actually gone in the bottom. One thing I would suggest keeping on is the uh, ball arrow. You can see here there's an arrow that points to the ball when you're in car, car cam, which is this camera here. So it, gets, it gives you a good idea of where the ball's rolling before you even see it. So um, same with this indicator on the floor. You can see the indicator kind of grows and shrinks as it hits the ground. So if I flick this up again, you can see how it gets a tiny circle. And this kind of gives you a good timing of when the ball is going to land. It, it tells you when the ball is going to get close to the floor. So right here, if I see this, I can catch it before it lands. So like I said, ball arrow is important. Uh, these performance graphs are just things that show up on the screen like this. If you want to see uh, your internet usage or, or what, what's happening with packets and stuff, if there's any issues. Um, and that's pretty much it for the interface. Uh, I would keep the display scale and the interface scale is 100%. It's just nice to have uh, the bigger scoreboard so you can see the time a lot easier and the boost is uh, very visible from your peripherals here i can kind of see that i got 24 without even looking at it um you'll get used to that as well what's nice about this game is that there's not very much interface during the gameplay there's, the hud is very limited which is nice it's just full-on gameplay uh, you'll hear from a lot of people that this game is there's not really any rng except for spawning off of a demo so it's really all up to you uh to you know push and improve um and there's no real way to like improve from someone telling you uh, without seeing your gameplay specifically. Now we'll move into the controls here. Um, I think if you go to default, uh, let me let me go to default here and go to, I think it's standard. So there's a weird thing that they did, which when they made air roll left trigger, which is your reverse, obviously. Um, they used to have air roll on X. So 
This is the uh, the X arrow here. This is how it used to be uh, laid out. What most people do, because it's very uncomfortable to press A, B, and X at the same time, most people change these to like left bumper, which is a very comfortable position to have your, your finger resting. Um, or I guess it's L2 or L1. Um, so now you can you can drift. Obviously, you can see my scoreboard is also attached to that button. So that's why you have to switch it. Uh, obviously, the best option for that is to switch scoreboard to the select button, which is where it should have been in the first place. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. That makes the most sense uh, just to have it as a select so you can view it uh, with that button. That's pretty much the only thing I change with my settings. Uh, the rest of it's pretty comfortable. So uh, you can basically boost with B, jump with A. And uh, you obviously with the cinematic at the entry uh, of the game, you can see how to press those buttons and you just get used to moving around the field. Try to get used to boosting and flipping. These are the two things that uh, I see a lot of low level players, like my girlfriends actually started playing the game and a lot of them are just driving around like this. And you know, now that the ball's in front of me, I can kind of boost, like just tap it. And you can see you kind of pick up pace. And I would just get used to how fast the car turns, how, how quickly and, and stiff it is. And then just get used to hitting the ball around like this in free play. Obviously, I've got a bot chasing me around right now, but just get used to doing this and just hitting the ball around and timing your turns to pop the ball. And by the way, like I said, this is all stuff I would suggest doing before you even jump into a ranked game. Obviously, they made it so you have to be level 10. I think that's too low of a level. I think the, the gap needs to be a little bit higher uh, before you jump into ranked, but do some casual matches, do some free play, and uh, just get used to hitting the ball around. Just kind of keep contact with it and uh, get used to the turning. So going back into controls, steering sensitivity and aerial sensitivity are an interesting one. Basically, how to explain this, I'll go into paint real quick and describe this uh, in more detail so you understand what's happening. So basically, here's your analog stick. Uh, just quickly, I'll make another middle piece. So this is the middle of the analog stick. It's not, ex not exactly accurate, but basically what happens is if you have an input, let's say here, and your, uh, your scale is one to one, right? 1 to 1, right? 1.0, then your output will be the exact same as your input so i'm just going to overlay it like that so that's that's what you see when you have an aerial sensitivity of one or a steering sensitivity you're going to have the exact same input on your analog stick as you push it out now what happens if you it's not exactly to scale but i'm just giving you an idea of what happens so if you have 1.2 and you have this input what will happen is that it's now going to act as if you have an input let's of say like this so now your input is a lot longer or a lot quicker so what ends up happening is you actually cap out your your maximum output uh, like as you increase your sensitivity this could be your maximum output so now you have a circle uh of this range um around the middle obviously i didn't get the perfect scale because this is a little bit weird but let's say like this um this is now your output your input now your output range will be the full circle so you've now lost half of your your range of motion which I don't really like, so I don't really use the aerial sensitivity. People seem to think that it makes them faster because you'll be able to click it. But if you just smack your analog stick to the full amount really quickly, it's basically the same thing. So that's sensitivities here. Like I said, I keep these default, but definitely experiment with them and see if it makes you feel faster. Um, controller dead zone is an interesting one. So this is basically uh, the point at which you need to click your controller analog stick until an input is actually registered. So you don't want to have it too low because there's dead zones, basically. There's areas in the controller that when the analog stick is sitting flat, it can register an input even though it's just resting because it uh, basically analog sticks wear out and they get a bit, a bit stuck. Most people keep it between 0 0.05 and 0 0.1. I think 0 0.1 is a very good spot. You basically have consistency throughout the entire controller's lifespan. Um, and that's what I would say is the best spot uh, for starting at least because I think it starts at 0 0.3 which is way too high you need to basically stick your analog stick almost 33% of the way out before an input is even registered that's not very good you'll have more range of motion with 0 0.1 dodge dead zone is basically the opposite basically you want uh, when you're dodging in the game here so if we skip to the gameplay and I'm going to jump once and then and then push forward to jump uh, to flip that flip was only registered if my controller analog stick is pushed at least 85% of the way. And most of the time when you're when you're trying to flip, you push your analog stick all the way down like this. So you're fully spinning like that uh, to get a flip. So what I do is I have it at a, a bit of a range of 0 0.85. So there's a 15% range at which you can flip. And I find this to be pretty consistent. You do not want it to have this very low. What will happen is as you play the game and you're trying to push back and double jump, 
you'll find that what happens is you end up doing backflips because you're trying to double jump but as you double jump you're hitting the stick a little bit as you're pulling back and uh that's a little bit more advanced obviously going into uh jumping and double jumping but basically you want to make sure this is a little bit higher so that way the dodge dead zone stops you from backflipping in situations where you're trying to just double pop and pull your stick back uh controller vibration is obviously a preference i like having it disabled just because it is a bit of a, a nuisance to have the controller vibrate in your hands it feels more consistent if you have it off um but you can also mess with the uh the setting of the intensity if you want to have a little bit of it even 0 0.1 uh to have a little bit of uh tactile feel but like i said i, I disable it most of the time uh ball camera i would suggest toggle camera camera mode used to be hold back in the old game the, uh, the predecessor to rocket league uh that's a pain to hold basically you have to hold uh, the button i'm holding it now and i'm letting go holding letting go and i would not want to use my finger pressing down on the the, t the toggle of the button here i'd rather just press y once and be done with it so definitely a lot better to have this on toggle which i think they have it by default and these are two keyboard settings which i don't use but you can test the mouse sensitivity um if you want for turning and stuff that's pretty much it for for, for controls for me i would say that's that's probably a good a baseline to start with um as far as camera settings go the initial camera settings are not great uh this is what you start off with and it just feels like you're a bot <laughs> basically uh you lose a lot of information as you can see fov uh goes into how wide the view is i would just crank that up and get used to it it might feel a little bit weird at the start um as you can see this is a bit disorienting even for me right now with these settings um, and you see this little bumpy stuff that's happening when you hit the ball or jump or land. Uh, that's camera shake. And uh, it's a bit of a meme in the Rocket League community. Uh, camera shake is awful. I would turn that off right away. It still surprised me that five years later after this game's been released, it's still on default. Uh, but yeah, turn that off. Uh, it's definitely not a good way to play. Um, the rest of the camera settings are a little bit of personal preference. Um, but these are my settings here. Um, I've done a whole video. I will link the, the old video in the description. I uh, basically did a whole video on why I have these settings that I do, but I've actually changed them since that video. Uh, there's a reason why back in the day, there was a, a time where one stiffness, which uh, you can go in and watch that video to see all the descriptions more in more detail. That entire video is dedicated to it. Stiffness is basically how much, uh, how stiff it is when you turn in, in car cam. So right here, you can see it's very stiff as you turn. Uh, it completely follows your car, basically. Uh, if you want to see the difference, I can turn that all the way down to zero. And as you're in camera mode or car cam, you can see your car actually turns past your view as you're turning. So a lot of players like to have a mix, usually around like 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Uh, give give 1.0 a try though. Give all the different uh, different stiffnesses a try um, and see how it feels for you. Um, you can see how like how fluid or how buttery it feels when you're turning like this, which is why a lot of players like lower stiffness. You can do a bit of drifting or get used to the control like that. Um, I, I just got used to one stiffness and there's a lot of uh, good stuff like accuracy or or control you can get with one stiffness as well. So give it a try, test out different different stuff. But like I said, the default control of the camera is not great. Uh, these are my settings. I feel like they're pretty uh, balanced. You get a, a good view of the field. You get a good view of your car. Uh, there's a bit, a bit of a rule of like thirds here. I would say the top of your car should be like on the bottom third of the screen. So you get a lot of information. You don't want too much of the ceiling, and that can have to do with your controller. I mean, your camera angle. So you can see you, you want to have a good balance of like a view above and a view below. You don't want to go all the way down like this and look down, uh, because you just lose a lot of information in the ceiling. Uh, obviously, when you're starting off, you won't have the ball reaching the, the ceiling too much like this. But as you get in the future like this, and you're below the ball, uh, you get in a situation where it's really hard to uh, see the ball like this. So if I turn off. Uh, the game right now and I go to camera you can see if I go to minus 15 it's not as obvious right now but as you can see right here it's really awkward to get a view of the ball as it's falling down to the ground so this is a little bit difficult to control the ball you might get a bit of a view over the ball but that's not really super necessary so like I said just just try it out uh, try different settings um, and uh, maybe check out some pros as well. I know you, if you're not familiar with the Rocket League uh, esports scene, you might want to look it up and see some different pros. There's a bunch of settings all over Liquipedia you can see and test them out. Um, but you'll know you'll notice an immediate change in uh, how the gameplay feels. Inverse swivel is just literally uh, if you look up or down, it goes the opposite way. So I, I use that. I look I I used to play a lot of airplane games 
and uh, up is down for me when I use the analog stick. So if you want to turn that off, feel free. It's right here. You can just turn that off. Transition speed is how fast uh, the transition happens between uh, ball cam and car cam. You can see with um, with 2.0, it just switches completely. If you want to have that change a little bit faster instead of fully transition, you can change it to like 1.4 and you can see it's pretty quick. Uh, it's a little bit disorienting for me though. I just use default. I've been used to it for quite a few years. Uh, but if you're new to the game, you can definitely uh, mess with this and try it out. Swivel speed is how fast this camera movement is with your right analog stick. Um, basically, just how fast it turns. I usually use 3.6. It's a it's a comfortable position between fast and slow and just uh, feels nice to flick your camera to the side like that to look around. And the last few things is, uh, you know, if you want to have text chat off, you can turn it completely off or you can change it to team only, team quick chats only, quick chat only. Uh, you know, if there's a lot of toxic people, you can shield yourself from team team chat completely or do whatever you want with quick chats and stuff. I would make sure also that all of these uh, bandwidths and send rates are at high just so you get the maximum uh, <laughs> priority possible for your internet. Uh, this game is very demanding. It basically calculates physics at 120 tick, which is very, uh, very unheard of in a lot of games. Um, but I'm pretty sure the server send rate is still 60. Um, so it's a bit, of, it's a bit of a weird system. Basically, the client for Rocket League does a lot of predicting itself. So when you're on an online service, you might see a bit of weird ghost touches, they're called, which is when the ball moves but then actually shifts back to where it was. And that's because the game's trying to predict. Uh, where the ball's going before it actually happens. All the calculations are done on your client, and then the server kind of says, okay, that happened or it didn't happen. So the more, the, the, quick, the quicker that your client can communicate with the server, the better. So I would make sure those are all on high. Input buffer is also something you can mess with, but I would leave it as default if the game feels okay. Uh, STS and STS, uh, CSTS, you can look up those online with the abbre abbreviations. I'm not really too sure about how they work exactly, but they're try I think these are better for like Wi-Fi and trying to reduce the input lag and uh, the feel of the server. Uh, but like I said, just probably leave that default. And I think that's pretty much the only thing you need to be worrying about for settings. Um, if I did miss stuff, um, there's gonna be a lot more tutorials in the future. But I wanted to uh, basically jump into this before we even get into a road to Supersonic Legend, which is the top rank. I will be doing a complete tutorial on all the steps. Uh, throughout each rank and moving up the up the uh, the bracket But we're gonna be doing that in 1v1 just because a lot of players when you jump into this game I think the best play place to actually work on improving is 1v1 because you do get to get on the ball as much as possible so um, Like I said, there's so many things you can do to pr prepare before you even jump into a casual match Like free play free play is probably gonna be your one one area where you're gonna be spending a lot of time just getting used to touching the ball um, and this is what I was talking about before. Just get used to turning and and looking at the ball and turning off ball cam uh, back and forth and just get used to doing these touches. It seems pretty easy when I'm doing it, but as you can see when you try to actually play it yourself, uh, it will not be as easy. So um, definitely get used to the timing of turning into the ball and make sure you use the boost to help your timing as well. Because you can see I can catch up to the ball right here with a little bit of boost. I'm just kind of just spitting it out a little bit. And, uh, and we'll move on from there from the, from the next tutorial. Uh, this is basically just trying to get your settings down at the beginning because uh, it helps out in the future a lot with like certain car control and stuff. Um, I don't want to like overwhelm everybody with a lot of information about like what to do uh, in certain situations and stuff. So I'll be moving through the ranks and basically describing uh, what I'm what I'm thinking about at each rank. And I will be playing to that rank and I don't want to I don't want to be you know smurfing and being a, a nuisance in a, in a rank. I'll basically just be playing the way everyone else is. And sort of talking about the steps uh, that you can take in each rank to try and move up in the in the game. Um, obviously, with me, I have 10,500 hours uh, from the last five years of playing, so my car control is very very good. But at the start, you're going to be finding a lot of struggling, a lot of whiffing and stuff, and that's just natural. That happens. Um, you really just got to play the game more. So, hope you guys enjoyed this first little look into a uh, tutorial series. Um, if you do enjoy this kind of content, I know for my my regular viewers, this probably won't be very good at the start, but there's probably still more to learn as we go through and move up into the Supersonic Legend ranks. So obviously that's the highest rank in the game. I'm hoping to uh, move through this, this series, uh, starting from bronze all the way through. So this will be a, a series for all players of all ranks of, you know, all gameplay hours and uh, basically just describe how to slowly improve in this game. But until next time, guys, have a good one. I'll catch you guys in the next video.